This video will be an introduction to graphing quadratics. And we're going to go ahead and start with y equals x squared, which is often referred to as the parent graph for graphing quadratics. This is because this is a good starting point for graphing any possible quadratic. So let's take a look at what happens when we do y equals x squared. We're going to basically just substitute in our x values and see what we get for y. So if we start with negative 3 squared, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Negative 2 squared, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. And I'm going to stop showing the work. I'm just going to go straight to the answer. So you can see what's happening here. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4 and 3 squared is 9. This pattern looks nothing like you've seen with linear. So let's take a look at what, it, what kind of graph it forms. So um, I'm actually going to start in the middle at 0, 0. And then I've got 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 4. There's also a negative 2, 4. There's a 3, 9 and a negative 3, 9. And then, by the way, this is called a parabola. And we can make a nice curved line connecting these points. It would technically go on forever. So that is our parent graph. Uh, let's take a look at where does the x squared part show up in this graph when you see these points. So uh, here's what you don't want to think about. You don't want to look at these points and say, oh, from this point 0, 0, I'm going up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 2, 4, 5, over 1. You know, that is a pattern, up 1, up 3, up 5. But that doesn't show you, that doesn't, oh, too, back, too much back. There we go. That doesn't show you where the x squared shows up. Here's how you can see the x squared. By the way, most important term, this point right here, 0, 0, that is what we call our vertex. Okay. So notice from the vertex, how do I get to the first point on the right? I go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. How do I get to the second point um, on the right or left? If I go back to the vertex, notice if I go over 2, I end up going up 4. And that, that is how you can see the x squared. Notice that 1 squared is 1. Notice that 2 squared is 4. And if we do the last point we have here from the vertex, I'm just going to overlap here. I'm going over 3, and that goes up 9. Over 3, up 9. So you can see 3 squared is 9. So you always have to go back to the vertex if you want to be able to see that x squared in action. All right, I've cleaned up the graph and added our next graph. Our next graph we're going to look at is y equals negative x squared. Now, it's important to realize that there's no parentheses in that negative x squared. That negative x squared technically means negative 1 times x squared. So we can take our answers from y equals x squared and simply multiply them by negative 1. So for negative 3, we have our 9 from x squared. That becomes negative 1 times 9, negative 9. Our positive 4 becomes a negative 4. Our positive 1 becomes a negative 1. And we have 0. Again, negative 1 times 1 squared, negative 1, negative 4, negative 9. So here's an important thing for you to realize. x squared is always positive. Negative x squared is 
always negative. The only exception is zero. So let's go ahead and graph this y equals negative x squared on the same exact graph so you can see the difference. So we still have our vertex at zero, zero, but now when I go one to the right, I go down one or negative one. When I go over two, it's two, negative four. And then we have three, negative nine. And negative one, one, negative two, negative four, and negative three, negative nine. And then I'll try my best to make a nice little connection here. So what happened? When we get negative x squared, it just took our original parent graph and flipped it upside down. So if there's a negative sign in front of the x squared, your parabola is going to open down, whereas our original x squared opened up. Okay, next, let's take a look at what if instead of y equals x squared, we have y equals x squared minus 6. Okay, so what happens to our table? Well, we just need to add a minus 6 to every one of our points here. And then we'll go back and calculate and see what happens to our graph. So now I've got 9 minus 6 will be 3. 4 minus 6, 4 positive, 6 negatives, negatives 1 in by 2. Now I got one positive and six negatives. Negatives one in by five. Zero minus six is negative six. And then we just have the mirror points. Notice that we have a pattern here with the mirror points. That's negative five, negative two, and three. Okay, so what happens when we put this on the graph? So now my vertex is actually zero negative six. Right there, because you guys realize from this table, we now have, we have an x value of 0, and our new y value is negative 6. Okay, then we if we go over 1, 1 is now negative 5. Okay, uh, negative 1 is also negative 5. Positive 2 is now negative 2. And negative 2x value gives you negative 2y value. And then 3 goes over 3, up 3. And if we go left 3, we go up 3. And then we can connect. So it is, it's basically, it's the same parabola. So what did that negative 6 do? It took our entire graph and moved it down six spaces. All right. Let's wrap up this video by just quickly graphing two parabolas using what we've learned so far. So first one I'm going to do is y equals x squared plus 2. So that plus 2 shifts the vertex up two spaces from 0, 0. And then Instead of doing a table, I'm just going to use my pattern from the vertex. If I go over 1, I go up 1 squared, both sides. Back to the vertex. The key to this pattern, if you're going to go over 2, up 2 squared, you always have to do that from the vertex. So from my vertex, I'm going over 2, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4. And back to the vertex, if I go left 2, I go up 4. Back to the vertex, over 3, and up 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. It is technically right off my graph for that plus 9. Okay, now just connect these, and you've got a nice-looking parabola. Okay, all right, how about the next one? So. First thing you want to notice about the next one is that we've got negative x squared. So that means that this one is going to be an upside down parabola. 
okay? But our starting point is at plus seven. So we're moving up seven points. Two, four, six, seven. So that's our vertex. Since we open down, I'm thinking over one, down one squared. Do that on both sides. Back to the vertex. From the vertex, I'm going to go over two to the right. I'm going to go down four. Two, four. It's right there. I know I got a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to temporarily erase that so it's easier to see. All right, back to the vertex. I'm going to go left two from the vertex. Left two, then I go down two squared, which is four. I can go back to the vertex and go over three, down three squared, two, four, six, eight, nine. And that would show up on the other side too. If I go back to the vertex and go over four, I think I probably have space to go down four squared or 16. But I've got enough points to have a parabola that looks pretty good. So let's just go ahead and connect these. And there's your two quick parabolas. So what you hopefully have learned in this video is we start with y equals x squared. That's our parent graph of our most basic parabola. If there's a plus number added to the x squared, we go up. If it's x squared minus something, we go down. And if there's a negative sign in front of the x squared, that flips the parabola and makes it go down instead of up. By the way, as far as moving the parabolas to the left or to the right, or making the parabola skinnier or wider, we will learn how to do that, but that'll be in another video. And that'll do it for our intro to graphing parabolas.